Okay, so today we are going to put a bowl of slab on, which was something that when I was at medical school I had never heard of. But it seems to be quite common acute management for people who have hand fractures. It helps stabilise the hand and uh, you really need to know how to put one on, especially if you're going to be working in A&E or in any sort of hand trauma. So the equipment that we need, we need some sheets of plaster. Um, so this is, uh, these have five sheets in a strip basically um, and then we need some crepe and some wool, some pink tape, scissors to cut your uh, plaster with and gloves are always a good idea because plaster gets absolutely everywhere and it's horrendous to get out of your nails and then we have a tub here which has a bin liner in just to keep the water and the plaster in and some warm water not too hot but not cold either. So we have Lucas here who is going to be our victim, he's one of my colleagues, and uh, so we'll start off, Lucas I'm going to put a bowl of slab on you, okay, and first thing we need to do is to measure the length of plaster that we need, so if I could borrow your arm Lucas, so we want to measure it so it goes from the fingertips to about mid forearm, so here is fine, that's fine Lucas, thank you. And then we want to take the five strips and fold it again in three. So one, two, and three. And then we would cut here. And here's one that we cut earlier, which is just the right length. Start by putting the wool on, which is really important because when the plaster hardens, it can irritate the skin, but also because as the plaster dries, um, it heats up. So you should feel warm, that's normal and um, it's an exothermic reaction so it's really important to put this on and just a tip is that it should roll off so if you wrap it around the arm this way it's much easier to wrap rather than going from inside out so we're just going to wrap it around we make a little hole you can just tear it for the thumb and then it goes right to the end of the fingertips sometimes the little finger needs to be covered and then we just wrap it back around the arm you can tear off any excess okay so you need to make sure that the fingers aren't too close together so there needs to be a little bit of room so that they can move their fingers laterally so we don't want to do, wrap it too tight around the fingers so the next bit is where we need our gloves because we're going to put the plaster on so we need this bowl of water warm don't forget to tell the patient it's going to heat up or they might panic. So we take the plaster and we just dip it in the water. You don't need too much water. Just make sure that it's nice and moist and then drain off any excess. We don't want it dripping down Lucas's arm. And then the patient needs to have the vulvar aspect of their arm exposed. So palm up and you want to place it to the end of the fingertips obviously not going over the end of the wool so now we're going to put the crepe on so again we're bandaging from the outside so it's rolling off and we want to make sure that it's snug but not tight on the arm and the hand because if there's any swelling it means that the slab won't fall off but it's not going to be so tight that it's compromising the circulation and again, we're leaving the thumb free here and wrapping around to the ends of the fingers and then back I'm going to tape it down. So again, here's some I prepared earlier. And we just tape it on the end and then we want to put it in the right position. So the end position or the position of safety. So hyperextend at the wrist to about 30 degrees and flex at the metacarpophalangeal joints to 90 degrees with the fingers remaining straight. And you need to hold it in this position until it hardens, which is now nice and hard. It will still feel warm. And then you can add a little bit more tape if you feel like this isn't going to be very secure. Now we have a nice bowl of slab. Before the patient goes home, we need to make sure that they're elevated in a high arm sling and we need to make sure that they have the appropriate follow-up planned um, and we need to tell the patient that if the arm becomes swollen it becomes uncomfortable they need to contact a medical practitioner straight away 
And don't forget, when you're finished, make sure you clean up your workspace, otherwise your life will not be worth living. And in a nutshell, that is how we do Volus Lab. Come and say bye, Lucas.